Hey everyone, this is an off the cuff video with some thoughts and I'm gonna title it, The Making of a Garage Queen, or maybe a better title is, Why We as Car Enthusiasts Get Attached to Our Cars. I'm specifically talking about this 2015 Fiesta ST, which I have had for nearly seven years now. And the car has 42,000 miles. And for the last two years, I have toyed with the idea of selling it. Obviously I have not. Will I? I don't know, but I have a lot of thoughts. And this video is sort of the debate in my brain um, as I think about hanging on to this or passing it on to someone else. And I honestly don't know what the answer to that is. I've literally been thinking about this for two years. But here's a few thoughts on uh, how does a car become a garage queen and why do we get attracted, attached rather, to cars um, I say that this is a garage queen because the reality, guys, is I have not driven this much at all in the last two years. About three years ago, I completed this car, which means I got to the goal that I had. I had a specific goal of power that was safe and reliable, and I'll show you that power. My latest dyno was 304 wheel horse and 337 wheel torque on E30 ethanol blend. Uh, reliable, predictable. The car will probably drive forever like this safely. And it's just very balanced and well put together in my opinion. And I got to a point where I pretty much did all the stuff I wanted to do. I'm uh, the mod bug doesn't take me over like it used to, so I can, you know, not have to buy everything out there. I did what I wanted, and I haven't really put much new on this in, in three years. So, you know, for me, in my case, I uh, have enjoyed it. And then, but just for the last couple of years, partly because of the pandemic and partly, to be honest, because I have six cars. Um, I've just been wrenching on and driving other cars. And, um, you know, aside from these two, I've just acquired these and a CRX that I have also and a truck all in the last one or two years, but I've had a whole bunch of other cars just in the last two or three years also that are on this channel that I've bought and restored and sold. So that's kept me occupied. Um, that's another reason I have not put many miles on this. Um, but that is the question, to, to, to give up or to keep. Um, so I just kind of wrote down some ideas and this is sort of like my three steps of like my three thoughts. And so the first thing I'd say is like, you have the hunt. Like when you have a car you want, you're hunting for it. Whether it's an old car that you saw in a video game and you, you know, you've got to have a CRX or you've got to have a Sylvia or whatever. Um, the hunt begins for me, this car became known to me in 2013 and that's when they started selling them and it won all these awards. And I just started thinking, the more I read, the more videos I watched, the more reviews. I just thought if I ever find one of those that's black with the navigation and regardo seats and sunroof, which is what I wanted, I'm going to get it if it's reasonably close. So I literally looked and researched and I, you know, bought the brochures and read the reviews and all the stuff for literally three years. Uh, well, two years, I guess, from 13 to the very end of 2015, I found this with 4,000 miles on a dealership lot and bought it. And that was kind of like phase one. Like you have a car that you want and then you hunt for it and then you get it. And that's like the anticipation. It's like the dating experience. It's like that attachment is forming. And, you know, for me, this is very calculated. There were other cars. I drove a Golf R, which I was not impressed with in 2015 and compared it to this. Um, you know, and there were other cars and I did my research. I went around, I test drove a lot of stuff and I just decided like the Fiesta is the one I want to hold out for. And then when I got one and I test drove it, I knew within probably, you know, 42 seconds that I was going to buy it. Um, you know, another hunt example is this XRS that I've been featuring, um, a lot lately. I've had it a couple months now and I've done a whole ton of stuff to it. Nothing too serious, but just a bunch of little fun light mods and some appearance mods. And that's a car that I read about in 2005. So it's 2022 now. That hunt for that car has been literally 18 years in the making. It's just been one of those cars that I thought if I ever see a good one, I'm going to get it. So that's kind of like phase one of like attachment is like you hunt and you want something. And again, like I've done this very specifically. It's not just like I'm going to go out and buy any car that I find that looks cool. 
I really research and get what I want. And sometimes it takes 17 years. Then kind of like the next phase is what I'd call like the creative phase. So for me, like this is like you have the car and then, you know, for me, probably more than half of the journey is just doing stuff to the car to make it mine. Like I want to make it unique. I want to make it interesting. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a musician. So to me, there's like a lot of enjoyment in customizing, you know, safely, like intelligently customizing the car. You know, that could mean wheels. That could mean you know, little stuff like this Ford overlay or this red trim, or I painted that gray or I put that easy lip on there, or I made those, you know, little appearance things or boosting it to, you know, over 300 wheel horsepower or, you know, tinting the windows um, or, you know, whatever, getting the right shift knob, getting my custom number plaque made. Um, and if you're interested in any of those, go look at previous videos. I've got info on everything. Um, this, you know, is a tell of what I've done to this car. And this is just part of that, like, phase two, as I said. I built this shelf that just has stickers of many, if not most, of the mods that I've put on this car. And so this is that journey. This is the first for me. This was a couple years in the making of experimenting and trying this and trying that and getting the car to a place where I had it customized to where I wanted it and enjoyed it. And for me, again, that creative process is like probably most of my enjoyment of cars. Um, and, you know, and then I have the receipts to prove all of that. So this is just the journey of creating the car. You know, all the stuff that I bought, all the times I went to the dyno, receipts for, you know, literally everything I bought for it um, in here and uh, all the extra stickers. So that's kind of like the second part of it. Like the first part is like the hunt. And then the second part is like that creative process of like making it yours, making it mine. Again, this is all has to do with like, how does a garage queen get created? Or how do you get attached to a car that you don't drive much, but won't sell? Um, you know, for me, the creative process, for example, on this Insight, um, you know, I just, a couple weeks ago, I put the vinyl roof wrap. I wrapped the, the roof because uh, it was fading. And it's something I had thought of doing, and I've done it to several other cars. So, you know, it came out pretty decent and then did the pinstripe. And, uh, you know, for the XRS, the creative process was making this emblem and, you know, painting this one so it looked cool. And getting, the you know, the custom license plate that has the engine code. And just all those little things that um, are just that fun part of creating the car and making it the way you want it. Um, so, you know, the hunt is the first kind of stage and then the creating, the customizing, to me, it's just like super fun and my juices are going and I'm reading and looking at pictures and pricing things. And for me, a lot of it, I pay cash for everything. So, you know, the anticipation, like for this, for example, the turbo swap was over a thousand dollars and that took me some time to save up the money because I didn't have a thousand dollars that I was going to just throw into the car. So, you know, that was good because it was months of saving the money, doing side jobs, painting, whatever I could do to earn the extra money so I could pay cash. And then that anticipation was really wonderful. Then it finally paid off when I uh, got the turbo and installed it. So that's part of the process. So the hunt, the creation, and then the third idea is like, then you have like the memories. So like there's the hunt for the car and then like you get it and then the creative process of like, okay, now I'm making it mine. And then like you got this car and you've had it for a month or a year, in my case, nearly seven years. And you have all these memories attached to this car. Like in Mexico, in second gear pulls, I have beat or kept up with pretty much anything in this car. Probably its crowning achievement was from a light, a Dodge Hellcat, roared so loud that i couldn't hear i heard the supercharger whine just crazy like you could hear nothing and my car kept neck and neck with that car from five to about 65 miles an hour at which point you know that's when the speed limit was getting exceeded and i decided to stop because i didn't care but just the fact that this little car could do that is amazing so you have like all these great memories of your journey with the car and the, the you know the the fun races you've done maybe and, um, you know, people staring at the car and asking, like, what is that? Is that a Focus? No, that's a Fiesta. You know, people staring at you when you pop your exhaust when you go by. Just all those little things that happen, those memories. And then the other thing for me is, like, life memories. Like, seven years is a long time. That's, like, a seventh of my life right now. I'm 49. So, like, you have a lot of memories attached to a car. 
Um, you have trips you've taken in it. You have, like, I have four kids, and they've ridden in the back of this car. Some of them, not all at once, obviously. You know, my kids have grown up around this car. I've grown up around this car. This has been my car for, like, the fourth decade of my life, pretty much all of it. So, um, you know, and the other thing for this car, like, I've got close to 50 videos on this car. So there's just this, like, memory and experience that you have attached to a car. And all those things play into why a car can become a garage queen. Again, I've driven this probably two, two to 3,000 miles in the last two years. That's nothing. And it just sits. And I drive it once or twice a week, and I've got all the other cars. And it's not because I don't like it. It's not because I'm bored of it. I, every time I drive it, I love it. But it's just, like, it's becoming, I just admitted it recently, like, this car is a garage queen. And um, so... You know that's the that's the situation that i find myself in it's just sort of admitting that this is where we're at and um that's the process that goes into it is that you realize that you know somebody just awkwardly pulled into my driveway and is staring at me who it is i don't know uh we'll continue so you know so for me that's that's kind of how you arrive there it's like you have all that um you know tied up into the car and uh let me pause for a moment. I'm on a call, so I just need to take that. Thanks a lot. And uh, and you know, and there you are. You've you've got the car, and you have all that energy. The the hunt, the creative process, and then the stories all wrapped up in it. And then when you think about maybe selling it, it's like I don't know that I can. I've got all this love. You know, it's more than just a car now. It's like, it's this journey. It's this part of my life. Um, and so, like I said, for me, it's about the journey. It's, it's not about the destination. It's about enjoying it. And, you know, when I think about maybe selling this car one day, it's like, well, I, I don't need the money, but I just don't drive it much. I, there's nothing I necessarily replace it with. Um, it's not that I'm fickle. I've had it seven years. You know, that's a long time to own a car. I've been married to a beautiful blonde for... 26 years so it's not about looking for something new it's just like the thought is maybe it's time to pass this on it's not even i don't even see it as a sale i see it as like maybe it's time to pass this on i've loved it and enjoyed it and maybe it's time for somebody else to having said that that could happen in a month or it could not happen for 10 years i just honestly don't know but these are the thoughts in my head as I think about it. And I just think about this car and I've had it so long again and it's, it gets driven once or twice a week. But, um, you know, the making of a garage queen. How do you get a garage queen? Well, guys, that's how. <laughs> that's been my experience. This is the first, I think, real garage queen I've had of the 38 cars I've owned. Um, this is the one I've owned longer than any other, aside from a minivan, which was not the car I drove primarily. Um, and I just admitted the other day, I was like, it's a garage queen. I drive it once a week, but I just am struggling to know what to do next. Um, and yes, this is a first world problem, but I would say this is the reward of, of, you know, again, you know, saving your money, buying cash, spending the time, healthy hobby, investing yourself, researching, and then you end up with something that's, uh, you know, been a really special part of your life. So that's my thoughts on uh, why we as enthusiasts get attached to cars and maybe have a struggle knowing what to do next. Um, final thought, you know, off the cuff as I think about this car, like I said, I just don't know. I, uh, I think about what to do with it and I'm not bored of it. I don't need it. I don't know. It's an unknown. Maybe some of you guys can relate. But there probably comes a time when we just decide, you know what, it's time to not sell it, not get rid of it, not be bored of it, but maybe it's time to just pass it on and let someone else enjoy it. Because you only live once and, you know, it's not going to sit here forever, getting driven a thousand miles, you know, a, a year. So anyhow, um, I'm tapering off into rambling at this point, but thanks for watching. I'm curious what your thoughts might be if you're reading this and, uh, and uh, so leave those comments. We'll discuss it. And uh, that, is, that is my thoughts on the Fiesta ST Garage Queen. How do you get there? What do you do about it? And what do you do next? Peace. God bless you today. Hope to hear from you in the comments. Thanks for watching.